Hey, what's up? It's Eric. And today you've seen me do this before, but we're adding another Pico remote switch to our lights up here in this upstairs loft area. We use this area as a studio and a bunch of other reasons. And we do a lot of our recording from right here. And we'd like to have the ability to control our lights for the whole area off of this location. And currently there's not a way to do that. So the great thing about Lutron and the Caseta or RAW 3 Select in this instance is these Pico remotes. They're fully programmable to run any zone of lighting that you want. And you can place them anywhere. As you'll see, there's no box here for electrical, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna use this Pico bracket that just mounts directly to the wall. And then this slides right into it. And then we just put a cover plate on it. So that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I wanna measure where we want this. Uh, I always like to have my switches just a little off of the door jam. And so I'm gonna come here, but we want it to be the same height as all of our other um, switches. And so we were, the bottom of our switches are right at 44 inches. And so I'm just gonna go here and this feels about right. And I'm just gonna put a little mark because that's where the bottom of our bracket's gonna attach. So these brackets come, it's just a simple piece of plastic that mounts directly to the wall. And this has all the hardware. If you were doing any sort of connecting the electrical, it has wire nuts for you. It's got screws for the plate and then it's got screws to attach it to the wall. So our bottom screw is gonna go right where that hole is. And then what I'm gonna do is mark it with my pencil. We're generally level here, but the great thing about these brackets is that they've got room to move in either direction so that you can get them fully level, which will level that as soon as we're done. I had to get my glasses because I couldn't really make out what size this was. I needed the 3 16th inch drill bit. So I'm just gonna drill these really quickly. It doesn't need a whole lot. Easy peasy. Swap it back out for my driver. Look at that. Try not to touch the wall too much because I don't want to get my beautiful white wall all dirty. I have to pound that one in. Like that. Get that guy in there. Oh, don't bend. There we go. Okay. Get in there. And then I'll just kind of push it in with that. With my rusty trusty Milwaukee hammer. You just got to get this little tab off right here it just was more force than i could force upon it and you just take these little edges off and then it's off see how simple that is and the reason that you take that off is because if this is on and it's sitting flush against the wall it stands it off too far this plate and it just doesn't look right when you put the cover plate on so you get rid of that and you take your screws and Start number one. Start number two. And you can see your hole, there it is. And before I tighten it all the way down, we're gonna get our level. And just verify that we're level. Pretty close, but not quite. I noticed that a bit. There we go. Okay. We just need to pull out this Pico. And it comes with a little plastic tab on the back. But then just slide this little piece of plastic here out. And you slide the Pico down in it. Sits nice and steady. And then take your Clara wall plate. Split it like this. We like the Claros. They just have a really clean finished look to them. But 
set it right here over the Pico. Oops. And then you just snap the cover on it. And you would never know that was not an actual switch. Now we're going to turn it over to Greg and he's going to program it for us. Okay, Eric's got the Pico remote mounted on the wall right over there. And now we're gonna configure it using this fine fancy Lutron software. It's called Lutron Designer. You, have, you use this software for when you're configuring Radio RAW 3 systems. We've already set up a system for the office, so we have it ready to go. It's got all our places on here, like downstairs, upstairs, common area. So we're going to just open this up and head to our common area. We don't have anything in the common area. So we're gonna add a device here, add a light icon. There it is right there. So we're just gonna add a new device. We're gonna edit our toolbox really quick. Let's go in here. We're gonna add our Pico and it is a three button with light icons. So we're gonna add that to our work bench and then we're just gonna drag this down into our device location. And we've got our Pico, and we're gonna put uh, Eric Office Door. And now, all we need to do, because it's part of the system, is we just need to program it to do something. So, we'll hit Program, and then we will click on the common area Eric's office door, and then we just tell it what we want it to do. So we're going to say, let's control the upstairs lights. We've got the stairs. So these are called the stair lights, I believe. So we're gonna put these as the stair lights, and then it will automatically configure. So we configured the top button to do 100% light and then the off button obviously takes it to 0% and then the favorite by default is 50%. So it's all configured. Once we choose the zone we want it to target, that's all we need to do. So at this point, we need to go in and probably activate our little Pico. So we're going to say start activation and then we're going to sync and save and then we sit and we do a little time lapse because this takes a few minutes. Once this reconnects, all we need to do to activate the Pico is we go over there, we just hold the down button for 10 seconds and then the light flashes saying that it's connected, we come back here and we confirm that it's all good. And then it's all activated on the system and then we just transfer all the programming over and we're good to go. So I'm gonna step over there really quick and I'm gonna push on the button for 10 seconds and I'll be right back. So we're gonna come back over here, sit in our little seat and it should show right here that it found the Pico. So we're gonna click activate, and then we'll just go ahead and exit our activation. We'll save our database, which basically is just the collection of all of the locations and all the devices in our system. And once that's done, we just need to do the final transfer to the system. And all the programming, all the new devices, they will show up. In this case, we only added one. So not a big deal, but we're gonna transfer it. And then it should work. It's writing out a whole bunch of tables. I'm not sure what all this all means. It's some crazy programmer speak, but it's getting all of the files written and then it's going to apply it to the processor, reboot the processor, and then it will all work. It'll appear in the app. We just really have to do this once, once all the programming is in there and it's integrated into the office. It's all just ready to go. We can always come back here and alter things though. Like 
there's that little favorite button. We could alter that to say we want it to be 25% rather than 50%. But for now, we're just gonna leave the defaults and it will work great. So it has loaded on and we're just waiting for the processor to come back online and then we'll run over there and test it out. Okay, it's done. Yay, it's all transferred. We can shut the computer off now. We're just gonna close it and head over there and test to make sure that the remote works. Here we go. Okay, we're heading over here. We're just gonna test this. I'm gonna just hit the on button. It works. Yay. And then of course we can dim to 50%. We probably need to trim those depending on what these light fixtures do. And then we can hit off. And so now Eric can turn the light on and off from the convenience of outside the door of his office. Yay. Okay, so we're all done. Eric installed the Pico on the wall with a little wall box adapter. We got a little plate on it, so it looks like it was just installed there. I did the programming on the computer. And now we have a light switch where there was no light switch before. We didn't have to call an electrician. We didn't have to do anything. We just use it and integrate it in with the control that lives right over there. We can turn on and off the lights from the convenient switch on the wall. So that's how you install a new switch where there was no switch before. We hope you like this video. Always, if you do, feel free to leave a comment, hit the thumbs up, and please, if you find it helpful, share it with your friends. Thanks for being a subscriber and watching Home Hacks. We'll see you next time.